The first thing I'll do is drag and drop my image from my download folder. I'm just gonna select OK on the import details. Here I have my image and I'm gonna also upload it in an erased or a transparent background. I just ran it through a remove background app on my phone and I have the remove background. It's not the cleanest and you'll see when it doesn't have a clean background, it makes the first step harder. So the first suggestion I would make would be to try and trace the image with the auto trace built into this program. So you're gonna go to path, trace bitmap, and in the trace bitmap section, because it's just a black and white, I'm gonna leave the defaults as is, which is a single scan, brightness cutoff, 4.5. I'm gonna hit update because that allows me to see the image. So here I can see that not the entire outline is provided. So I'm just gonna raise up my brightness and click okay. And as you notice, the higher I raise it, the more it identifies those black lines. I see some gaps, so I'm gonna keep raising it. I'm gonna go right there and say, okay. So once I say, okay, it's gonna convert my image. So you'll see if I select the image down here, it created 200, I'm sorry, 2,536 nodes to create this. That is horrible, especially for this design. What that means is think of it like a connect the dots picture. Um, the cricket needs to go from A to B, B to C, C to D, and it slows down with every point that's on your file. So if I click this edit nodes, or if you double click the file, you can see where all those nodes are. So here, every time it goes from one dot to the next dot, your Cricut machine has to think. We don't need all of those lines. So this image didn't really transfer well for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this and show you the way I would do it, which is more of a manual trace within the program. There's two ways of doing it. The first way is to use the Bezier tool. Well, well, both ways are using the Bezier tool. However, one way you can create your curves. So if you click on your butt, on, on your mouse, and it creates one point, and you see you can move around your mouse and it creates a line. If you click again, it will end that segment, but continue to allow you to create other segments. In order to create the shape, you would click release and you know go to your next point, click release. Now the way to close your shape, you always have to end up where you started so that it creates the actual shape. If you click a button, it'll give you the color. So that's pretty much one way of working with the Bezier tool. You can also create curves. It's a little bit more complicated when you're not used to the program, but instead of just clicking from point A to point B, you're gonna click and hold. So now because I held it, I can turn and my lines are now curved instead of just a straight line. So then I can put another point there and go wherever else I want. And if I hold my mouse, it creates the curving ability. And now you can you know, kind of round around your edges. Again, like I said, this can be a little bit complicated to control when you're not familiar with the program. So I'm gonna do the aforementioned way, which is gonna be much easier and you'll see how it works. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so we can see what's going on. I'm gonna start with the hand. So again, I'm using the Bezier tool and I'm gonna just click, click, click my way around this file. So I'm gonna start here at the finger and bring it up to there, click, 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 click. So there's my general shape. I'm gonna give it some color by just clicking on the color panel. We can see that looks nothing like a hand at the moment, but let's go ahead and get there. I'm gonna change the opacity to a 50 so that we can see the image behind it and it can help us with our outline. Now going back to the edit path node or double clicking it, we can start to edit it. Now, if you see before we do that at the bottom, it says we only have 12 nodes. That's all it took to make this hand. So let's go ahead and click the edit button. And because I have some curvature between point A and point B, I'm just gonna take it and drag it out. And I'm gonna try and line it up to my image as much as possible. That's it. Let's go to the next one. From point B to point C, we're gonna take this over here and drag it out to our outline. This one we need to drag inward. 
So we're just gonna take the outline and go ahead and drag it in. I need this part to come out some. So if you click on the node that's in the area, you can control each corner of your curve. So I'm just gonna pull this down this way so it goes into that curve better. Here, I'm gonna grab the line from the middle and drag it out. Now, when you grab it from the middle, you're not adding any additional nodes. You're just changing this diamond shaped node, which you see up here. That's a corner node and it makes sharp 90 degree edges. So by grabbing it, it then converts it to like a different type of node, which has a curvature to it. Again, take it over here, drag it to my shape, drag it to my shape. And let's go this way here. And five, drag it to my shape. Drag, drag. And you can get as precise or as not, you know, like obviously this is a hand drawing here, so it could be not symmetrically correct or the line's not as straight. So you don't have to follow it exactly. You know, you try to get that shape. Unless if you really did want it to be exact, then you know you would have to come in and really spend some time, maybe add some additional nodes to give you the curve and shaping you know, where needed. So I think that's gonna be okay for now. I'm gonna go ahead and do my interior as well. So I'm gonna need a new set. So I'm gonna go back to my Bezier tool, click, 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 click. A triangle should do the job. Go ahead and fill that shape in so we can see it. Go back to my edit section and just drag that away and create that teardrop kind of shape. All right, I think that looks okay. Now we need to separate or, or cut out, slice. If you're familiar with Cricut, it's called Slice and Cricut. Here we have a few different options that actually the new version of Cricut now sort of implement. Um, Union, difference, intersection, exclusion, division, cut path, combine, and break apart. So they all kind of do a little bit of something different. So I'm going to go ahead and select my black section, select my green section, and then I'm going to do difference, which means keep my back piece and eliminate the part that's on top of it. I'm going to hit difference. And now you see that my black layer has disappeared, but it has cut itself out of my green layer. We're done with that piece. We're gonna go ahead and just do the same process to the other portions of the image. This tree part should be pretty easy as we had a lot of straight lines here. So we're just gonna click, 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 click. I'm gonna go ahead and just go all the way to the other corner over there and then fix it later. Here, we'll put a curve down here, curve up there. There's some two bumps there, so we'll add an extra node there. Here we go, give it some color, change the opacity just so we can see what's happening behind it. Now, when you change the opacity, even if you forget to change it back to 100%, that op opacity feature doesn't transfer into Cricut because you're obviously not cutting in transparency, right? That's just the ability, you know, what the image looks like on the screen. So if you forget to change it back to 100, it's not gonna be a big deal when you import it. Um, you may get an error saying it doesn't support it, which is true. Cricut does not support the opacity feature, but if you just hit okay and bypass it, your file will still upload like normal. So we'll go ahead and just continue to edit all these sections and again, you can get it as precise as you want to your file. I'm just trying to quickly do a rough draft here. I'm gonna go ahead and give all of these edges some curve and some pizzazz here. And I think that looks pretty good. That's a pretty easy shape. Now let's go ahead and do our ornaments. I'm gonna just go ahead and get a circle shape and size that out there. Boom, boom, bang. Now this is a shape, so we need to probably change it to an object. So I'm gonna go ahead and do um, object to path. And now it goes from a shape to a path. Um, go ahead and do your text. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and type in Grinch. I like this font. It kind of looks Christmassy and celebratory. So we'll go ahead and size that up. Now, text is not transferable from Inkscape to Design Space. Um, so you have to change this from being text in a shape to being um, a cut path. So if you see, if I click the node section, it doesn't show me that this has any nodes. So basically the Cricut isn't going to recognize any cut path to follow. So that's what we need to do is convert it to a path. So we do that by a multi-step. The first thing we need to do is change the stroke to a path, which means go along my outline of my selected image and change that to a path, which is what we need. So we're going to hit stroke to path, which is control alt C. And then we're going to hit control alt G. Control alt G means ungroup. Or I'm sorry, control, yeah, control shift G means to ungroup. So now I've ungrouped it. So first I've created all of them into layers and that layer or into paths. That path was created by six different objects. And now I'm going to just weld those objects together. Here it's called union, which is control plus or path union. So now it's one solid path. And if I click nodes, I can see all of my cut paths, and I know that alone is 219 nodes. All right, so now again, you can either place this right on top, or if you wanted it cut out, you would select both of them, Control Shift minus, and it cuts out your Grinch. Oh, that was an ugly cutout. We're gonna go ahead and leave it there for now. Um, lastly, we need the little hand section. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up my Bezier tool one more time. And I'm gonna do this shape a little bit off. And you'll see what I mean by off. So here we go. I actually am starting with a rectangle. I'm gonna go ahead and do what we did earlier and stretch out our edges here, make my curvature. This one, let's add an extra node right here. Here. Oh, actually, no, I'm not going to do that. I forgot. I did this for a purpose. On this side, I'm just going to stretch it out over my green section, and then we're going to weld it, or not weld it, we're going to slice it out so that we can get the exact positioning of where my two greens meet. So there is the shape. That's all I need on this shape. And then we're going to use the green to fill in the rest of our curves. So I'm going to select both green sections. I'm going to do control D to duplicate them. And I'm going to do control shift plus to weld them together. So now it's one solid piece instead of two separate ones. Then I'm going to take my, I'm going to select that one and select my red section and do control shift minus. Nope, I lied. That's not what I'm doing. Yeah, I am. Control shift minus. So when I do control shift minus, which is the difference, it cuts out those curvatures that these two sections create. And now it sits perfectly in however my two green sections are. Now that my whole image is done, I'm, oh, I guess I, we can add a little rectangle down here. For the tree stump and again you can slice it out of the tree so that you have the perfect alignment this one's a little kind of simple so I think I'm just gonna move it to fit my curve bang boom bum. here we go now that our entire image is there, we can go ahead and select that picture that was our thing and open everything up back to 100. I'm going to add a background because I want to change that to being white. So 
And let's go ahead and just drop that to the back. So when I change this to white, we can see it. There we go. Oh, and I guess we need, um, let's do a rectangle. our ornaments and there you go that is how you would trace an image manually so you saw when we started that we did the auto trace it had like 2500 nodes or something like that um, here we can see that has 4 11 so 15 <clears throat> 9, uh, 16, 4, 4, and the words are the ones that have the most. So altogether, this doesn't even have 300 nodes compared to that trace that would have given us 3,000 nodes. So you can do this with any image, really, even live photos and just kind of trace your silhouettes and make kind of cartoony images. Um, and that's about it. I hope this helps. I'm sorry it was a little long. I was trying to keep it brief, but I want to give you as much information as possible. Thanks for watching.